Hey guys, Harry here and welcome to another video. You may or may not know that I am a huge anime fan and one of the seasons I'm most looking forward to this season is Sword Art Online Season 2 Gun Gal. So because of that, I'm going to be doing uh, weekly reviews on it. But if you follow uh, Sword Art Online or any of the seasonal anime, you'll know that we're already two episodes in. So basically in this video, I'm just going to recap on my thoughts of the first and second episode, give a general some thoughts that I had while watching through them. I made notes because, you know, I'm just that sad. And then I'm probably going to give a little bit of uh, thought of what I think is going to happen next in episode three. And then hopefully I'll have that review out straight after it's gone live on Saturday. If not, it'll be up early Sunday morning. I think that's what I'm going to try and do with these reviews. So to jump straight in, with episode one, it felt very fresh. I, wa I like the way that they've obviously upped the budget for the animation because obviously they've got the money for that. And I like the way that the new world was automatically introduced straight away. We got straight into the gun gal scenes and we've seen roughly what the world's like and what some of the people within the world are like and then as well as that we were introduced to the new threat which is the death gun and that obviously they've brought death back because in the second part of sort of online the first one fairy dance or elfheim or whatever it's called obviously the whole aspect of permadeath it was no longer there so obviously the fact that that was brought in automatically grabbed my attention but for the rest of the episode, it felt very much like a sort of recap to see, like, this is what the main characters have been doing. But the problem is, the majority of these characters probably aren't going to be main characters anymore. Obviously, Kurosawa is going to be still our number one guy. But the likes of Asuna and the blacksmith and um, his sister, I can't remember her name to save my life, and all that lot, I think they're going to be pushed to the side. And that comes a little bit more relevant in the second episode, so I'll get to that in a minute. So what was nice about the first episode was obviously the fact that we seen what everyone was up to, that they were still uh, doing their daily things. We found out that we're now a year after the whole incident in Fairy Dance and uh, Anchored. So that was nice as well as getting all the information from the detective dude or the, I can't remember, the producer dude. The, basically the guy who speaks to Kirito in the restaurant who's also in the like little movie Massive OVA because they have, basically Kirito tells him everything. Which I think's a little bit suspicious about that guy. He must know more than he's having on. Because out of all the people he went to, he went to Kirito. And it's like, I can understand because Kirito survived all this in, like, Anchored and all that. And he beat the system and he's, like, this overpowered gamer. But when Gungal was first, like, introduced to us as the viewer, it was basically Kirito said it's the only pro game in Japan. So all the players in there are surely going to be of the same side, uh, the same standard, if not higher than Kirito, because it's a completely different concept. Whereas Sword Art Online, uh, Anchored, it, that was very much an RPG. This is like a first-person shooter survival sort of game. The aspects might be a little bit different, so I thought it was a little bit dodgy he went to Kirito. Obviously, he went to him, it seemed like, for advice at first, but then he wanted to get him in the game, so it seemed a little underhanded to me. So that's basically all I have to say on the first episode. Jumping straight into the second episode, what I liked about this was we were automatically thrown straight into Gungal again, and we've seen that the world is a lot more grittier. As well as that, we didn't see much of the old cast until the end of the episode. So this is very much letting us get used to the new character, which is Shinon, the blue sniper-haired girl, because obviously she's going to be one of the main characters so they're doing this to like get us used to her to see what she's like to see her actions in play because she's freaking OP as hell and I personally think before her and Kirito become friends they're obviously gonna have to have some sort of square off and then it's gonna end peacefully or something because from what the like people she was around were saying that she's like the best sniper in the entire game and we do have clips of her like soloing monsters on her own just to get new snipers can't remember if that was at the end of the first episode or part in the second but obviously she's got some mad skills as you see at the end of this episode doing all the flips and shit and once again the animation was spot on it was an absolutely glorious just thing to watch i couldn't get enough of it and i can't wait to see what else happens now talking a little bit more about shinon because or shinon or however you pronounce her name what was very interesting about her character i think she's going to be one of those i don't know how to say it. in the game she's like very strong she's very confident in herself but then when you look at it in the real world when we see her coming out of the game she seems more of a like quiet withdrawn um sort of like a social outcast sort of person and i just found it very interesting because she seems like a very very overpowered character which will work off with Kirito well. She just needs some more personality which we'll probably get later on in the series. I just feel like they could have added a bit more to her because at the moment she just seems she seems very like 
shallow. We just need some more like character building with her and then I'll be chilling. What's going to be interesting, I think, in episode three, because obviously Kuroso, he's going to have to enter the, he'll either enter Gungal, either episode three or a bit later. I think he's going to ask his old friends from Fairy Dance and Anchorage to go with him. Obviously, Asuna's going to say no, just because of the threat of the death gun. Then obviously his sister's going to want to go because she's still infatuated with him. But I like that they're downplaying that at the moment. And because of that, I think Kirito is going to be like, no, no, I don't want you to get hurt. Be all the like family malarkey. But then we have the likes of the blacksmith who also liked him, who I think will go in, will end up joining him if they do end up joining him just as like, um, to reassure Asuna that he'll be safe. And then I'm not too sure about the, I think it's the pink haired girl, the one who had like the little flying dragon pet, if I vaguely remember her. And then obviously the, uh, merchant and the katana wielding dude i once again not a clue if they'll even come on there because i personally think they're gonna downgrade that class they're gonna keep them over to the side just so we can be introduced to new characters throughout the season because once again it's another 24 or 25 episodes so they're go we're gonna have a bunch more new characters hopefully it isn't split into two seasons like it isn't split into two worlds like um anchored and Fairy Dance was because obviously that destroyed the pacing a little bit and just with these first two episodes it feels like they're they're changing the way they're doing things they're actually they've evaluated themselves as a company A1 pitches and they're actually doing things correct and the pacing's actually working so far obviously we're only two episodes in so we don't know how far that's going to go but I'm hoping they use Gungal over the entire 24 episodes because I haven't read the light novel so I don't know what's going to happen so all in all that's just that's basically the gist of it I can't wait to see um, Shinon and Kirito face off because I strongly believe they're going to fight because as you see in the OP at the end they clash slightly there's going to be some tension there at first and then I just can't wait to see how their characters meld together he's obviously going to bring stuff out in her and obviously she's going to end up falling in love with him let's just hope Kirito and Asuna stay together because I don't know what happens later on in all the light novels I know that Asuna does have her own separate light novel like a little one special but anyway guys that's just been my little recap on Sword Art Online Gungal episode one and episode two I cannot wait to see episode three please leave comments below on what you think is going to happen because we all know Sword Art Online is going to be absolutely epic on Saturday so I've been Harry, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all the gory stuff, and I shall see you soon. Goodbye.